So I just wanted to show a close-up of the finished blanket. I love how it turned out. It turned out perfect. And I just want to show a close-up of the border. So here you can see the clamshell border. Now I was running out of the blue, darker blue, so I used a lighter blue for the other round for the clamshell. And because the lighter blue is a different style of yarn than my darker blue, I used a double crochet for the darker blue and I had to use a treble crochet for the lighter blue. Also on the corner, instead of a chain three between the clamshells or the shells, I did a chain of six on the corner and you can see how it lays flat perfectly. After I made the both of the, the shells, I decided that I loved the look, so I didn't fold it down like I did for my other clamshell border in the other video tutorial. So it's an option. You can either leave it like this or you can fold it over like I did in the clamshell video tutorial. Now the hardest part about attaching the fleece backing is getting it to line up with the front graphgan. This is what it looks like on the other side. It turned out really nice. Here's a close-up of the border. You can see how that you can't even see the stitches. It looks really nice. So again, that's why I make the single crochet border along the top and then along the bottom. And then I finish up on both sides so I can make sure that my back fleece will match up with the front graphgan. And it turned out really nice. And I don't need to make any stitches in the center of the fleece. So now I just wanted to show that it fits perfectly in my collapsible cloth container. If you like these collapsible cloth containers, I have the link for them, the affiliate link, on my blog at the top of my blog's homepage www.helenmaycrochet.com you'll see WOW crochet deals and I have the link for this particular I got three of these containers for one price low price and I love them so now we're going to work on the border and the first thing that you're going to do is create your embroidery stitch all around the border of your fleece backing you also want to choose the yarn color that you want for the border. Now I chose Karen One Pound yarn and the color that I chose is Royalty. This is just some of my leftover but you can see that I have a ton of this yarn left over. This really pretty royal blue. And here's some information about this yarn. You might find it helpful when you're making your embroidery stitches to use a rubber jar opener. It helps to grip the tapestry needle and pull it through so your fingers don't get sore. So the first thing you want to do is just get your tapestry needle or darning needle and you need one with a sharp point on the end and a large enough eye to where your yarn will go right through it. So I got quite a bit of yarn on my tapestry needle and you're not going to be able to make it all the way around your fleece blanket. So just get enough to make the embroidery stitches as many as you can because I'll show you how to add more yarn when you run out. So you want the right side of your fleece blanket facing up and you're going to start in one of the corners. So I'm starting in this corner and you can see that I have a little bit of the frayed portion. I'm just going to go right along that frayed portion about an inch in from the edge approximately. And then you're going to come up from the wrong side and you want to have about an inch border, approximately an inch border all the way around. And then you just bring your yarn through from the wrong side. I have to jiggle a little bit to get the thicker yarn to come through. And then you just want to pull it through until you have just a little bit of a loose yarn end. So that's about three inches. 
And then you want to take the yarn and bring it over at a 45 degree angle facing the left, if you imagine a square, it's in the left upper corner. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle, you're going to go right above where you just came through and go back into the towards the wrong side but not all the way because you're going to come back up with your tapestry needle about a centimeter and a half and you want to come inside the loop created by your yarn when you put it up at an angle just like this and then you just bring the needle through you might have to jiggle it a little bit because the yarn is a little thick you can see how the yarn is in the center of the loop that I created and then you just continue to bring the yarn through the center of that loop and then you have your first embroidery stitch now the thing to remember is when you're making your next embroidery stitch you want to take your tapestry needle and you want to go outside of the loop so here you can see your loop you want to go just outside of that loop back towards the wrong side and then again you're going to come back up about a centimeter and a half to two centimeters however long you want your embroidery stitch and then bring the yarn through again and you might have to jiggle it a little bit to get it to come through you can see how it's coming through the center of the loop which is what you want and then you just cinch the loop down and then you're going to go right just outside of the loop and go back in then you can see how I'm going just outside of the loop and back towards the wrong side again but then you want to come up about one and a half to two centimeters again and then you see how I have the yarn over towards the left and the tip of the needle is coming through the center of the loop created with the, the yarn and then just bring it through and then you just keep repeating this all the way around creating your embroidery stitches you can kind of pick up the loop if you need to to cinch that embroidery stitch down and try to make your embroidery stitches about the same size all the way around back to where you started and then you can tie a knot when you get back to where you started now I'm going to keep making my embroidery stitches and when I run out of yarn I'll show you how I join my new yarn end so now after you finish your last embroidery stitch and you start to run out of yarn we're going to add some more yarn just take and go right outside of the loop back towards the wrong side and then just pull the yarn through and I like to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end on the wrong side to tie a knot and then just get some more yarn to put onto your tapestry needle you don't want to get too much because as you can see the more you drag the yarn through the more that this the twisting starts to get a little bit looser so I like to I like to not have to change too much but I try not to add uh, too much yarn onto the tapestry needle at any one time and then what you do is you just start right where 
you left off so you go right next to where you left off and then come up back towards the right side just outside of the embroidery stitch and then just bring the yarn through and again you want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end to tie a knot And then you just take and tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends. And then I'm going to tie about three knots, three or four. Then you can take and trim the loose yarn ends. Make sure you leave a little bit of a loose yarn end. It'll just go on the wrong side of your work. Then you're just going to take, and again you want the yarn to be at an angle. And then you just take your, make sure the yarn is looped in front. And then you just create your embroidery stitch. And again I go about an inch, I mean not an inch, but two centimeters, one and a half to two centimeters the same size embroidery stitch that you've been making and again I have to kind of twist it back and forth because my yarn is thick and then you can see how you're bringing the loop around the exiting yarn to create your embroidery stitch And then you just continue on making your embroidery stitches all the way around back to where you started. Now I just want to show you when you reach a corner. So I reached the corner and I want to leave about the same distance all around the blanket as I make my embroidery stitches. So you can see how I ended on the wrong side. And then I'm going to come back up. with my tapestry needle and then I'm just going to resume making my stitches around the corner. So that's how I made my embroidery stitches around the corner. So now after you finish your embroidery stitch all the way around we're going to get ready to attach it to your blanket. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have the right side up and the right side facing towards the right side and we're going to be having the embroidery stitch facing up. So the right side is facing up with your beautiful embroidery stitch. And this is my top, le top, actually it's the left corner even though it's right on video. So when it's like this in the back of the blanket, it's the top left corner. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your stitch markers. And I have my handy dandy stitch markers. These are from Pastiche accessories on Etsy. I just love her site if you want to check it out. But you can see that I've collected quite a few. Now if you don't have any stitch markers you can use a safety pin as well. A safety pin will work too. But just something to hold the corners onto your blanket. Now once you've attached all of your stitch markers I placed one in each corner and then I also placed one halfway along the top and halfway along each side and halfway along the bottom. So altogether I have eight stitch markers in place and that's just so that when you start your stitches along the border that you're not going to accidentally put 
make it so that the blanket folds over on itself and it won't fit on the fleece. So that's why it's important to have your stitch markers or safety pins in place. And then the other thing is before you start you want to double check make sure that the right side of the back of the blanket is the way that you want it before you start crocheting. And this is how mine looks. So this is the right side of my fleece. There's my embroidery stitch and then here's the right side of my blanket. So what's going to happen is this little lip that you have on your fleece blanket that's going to end up being tucked towards the wrong side and you're going to be crocheting along the edge of the blanket. Now when you're making the single crochet border the first portion of the border design then you would want to start along the top. I, For mine I worked across the top and then I worked across the bottom of the blanket and then I worked across both sides making single crochets in every stitch. So now I'm starting, what I'm doing is I'm making the single crochet stitches across the top of the blanket first. So you can see here's my ship block and I have the top right corner of the blanket so here's the right side of the fleece backing and then here's the right side of my Tunisian crochet block. This is the ship block. I'm going to go right into the first, right here you can see where I went right into that gap. And then you're going to go right into the first stitch of the fleece black backing. And then just bring up a loop with your yarn, the color that you want to use for your border. I'm using this Karen One Pound and this color is Royalty. And then you just bring up a loop and then just take and tie a knot and then chain one and then you're going into the next stitch and then you can go into the same embroidery stitch so sometimes I'll make two to three single crochet stitches into the same embroidery stitch and this is what it looks like on the right side and then this is what it looks like on the back right side of the backing. And then I go into the next stitch and then go right into the next embroidery stitch. And you just evenly space your single crochet stitches across the top of the blanket and you're attaching the fleece backing to the front. Now as you're making your stitches, and like I said, I just evenly space my stitches in the embroidery stitches. Sometimes I'll do two stitches, two single crochet stitches. Sometimes I may even need three stitches. What's important is that you keep the distance from this top portion, the top right corner, with the middle of the blanket. So you want to make sure that your, your front is fitting correctly onto the backing. You don't want it to not reach the top corner, the top left corner. So you want your blanket to be evenly spaced from the right corner to the left corner across the top. Now you can add more stitch markers to or safety pins to help hold your blanket in place to make sure that it is fitting correctly with the fleece backing so that will help. You can place as many stitch markers or safety pins as you want. So here you can see how I made the single crochet stitches all the way across and I was able to get the backing to fit perfectly. Here's a close-up of the stitches. So on the Tunisian, Tunisian crochet side it's only one single crochet per stitch but on the embroidery stitch side you may need to scoot more single crochet stitches into one embroidery stitch. I usually fit as many as I can to get the backing, the fleece backing to fit. So you may even have up to four in some of them. And how you can space it is by making sure that you have safety pins or some of your stitch markers to help hold the fleece in place so you know how much fleece you need for the Tunisian crochet blanket. And as you can see, 
mine fit perfectly. And that's why I finish the top first, then I finish the bottom. So once I made sure that the bottom and the top fit perfectly, now I can finish, and I still will mark the sides too with stitch markers or safety pins to hold it in place as I put my single crochet stitches and crochet the front of the Tunisian crochet work to the back fleece that I'm trying to attach to it. So remember, this is just to attach the front to the back, so the front beautiful design to the back fleece, but I do have a separate video tutorial for the clamshell border too. I'm just showing it again on this video tutorial. So after you finish the top and the bottom, attaching the top and the bottom, then you can work on both of the sides to finish attaching the fleece, completely attaching the fleece to your beautiful Tunisian crochet graphgan. So here is the blanket. I made the complete single crochet border. I started with the top, as you can see, and then I went to the bottom and attached that with the single crochet. Then I went to both sides and I love how it turned out. So I have a single crochet border at this time, but I'm going to make this the clamshell border. But this is what mine looks like so far. I love how it turned out. So there's only a slight curling, but that's just because of the fleece backing. And once I put the clamshell border, it won't it'll lay flat and have a beautiful border. And this is the other side with the fleece backing. I love how it's turning out. Thank you.